Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee. Envy is off today, but my guy is here. S superstar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very PDD. much. PDD, Pete Davidson, what's happening, my brother? Nothing, man. Just struggling to grow a mustache. Oh, so you're actually trying to grow it out? I I'm, couldn't tell if you was sha you shaved it or not. No, I'm trying for the... I'm filming this thing, and uh, they were like, can you grow a mustache? And apparently, no. So it's a, <laughs> so it's a movie? <laughs> yeah, it's a movie. It's a horror movie that uh, we shoot in like a few weeks. So I'm hoping it comes in by then. Yeah. They yeah. want you to appear older? No, I just I just not look like me all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the hair color this week? Uh, no, I'm trying to go back to my normal hair, but uh, it just I just look look like Dennis Rodman. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, How you yeah. been during the pandemic, brother? Uh, I had I've been okay now. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a rough go at the beginning, but mm -hmm. luckily SNL came back, so like I luckily had some sort of normalcy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you felt that way with the show and stuff. Absolutely. But, uh, I think I, you know, was one of the spoiled ones during the pandemic where I got to work and uh, it kept my mental good. So I'm good now, but it's, this is a shitty, shitty time. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw last night, was it last night you were at dinner with Elon Musk? Yes. Yes. It so was. What, what, all this controversy around Elon Musk and SNL. So why did you guys I, discuss it? Yeah, I don't understand. I'm like, why is this? We didn't discuss it at all because we're all just like, why is, I just don't understand why this is the dude everyone's so freaked out about. I I thought I missed something. I did. I was like, did I was Elon like, did, say something? Did he do something? Yeah, like, I was like, what did he do? Uh, I, I, he's just like a, you know, really wealthy businessman that makes like, you know, nerd shit. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't know. He's really nice. He's I, I I'm excited. So is there any truth that the cast of SNL is like upset and refusing to film with him and all this other shit? Nobody that I fuck with. Mm -hmm. So like I I there's like I haven't heard anybody be like I, I everybody's kind of been like yo who's the guy that's so pissed yeah. off <laughs> Every, yeah because we cause we're on a group text so we're all just everybody's like I don't know so. Uh, yeah, we're we're all excited and and really don't understand the controversy. That's what Michael Chase said. I wonder if somebody just put that out there just to build up buzz for him being on this show. Hey, you know how social media and all yeah. that said that you know people like people like mm -hmm. controversy and people like uh, to quote Michael Caine, people like to watch the world burn. That's sometimes, right. You know. So who was all at dinner? You, Elon. Uh, we got Lauren. Okay. We got Chris Red, Keenan, uh, Chloe. Feynman was there, Ego was there, and Jost was there. Who pays? Uh, Lauren. Really? Oh, yeah. with Elon? It's a work. Yeah, it's yeah. a work. It's a work dinner. It's a it's work. Like a write off. It's a work yeah. dinner. Yeah. yeah. I one time was like, oh, maybe it would be cool if I like did like got the bill for like one of the host dinners, and then like I talked. to nope. uh, I was like, oh no. Oh, oh, you saw how much the bill was? Yeah. I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no way. How dude. much was it? No way. It was. It's like a couple racks. Those yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I have a rule that if I'm which out with somebody who got more money than me, yeah, I don't pay for nothing. Yeah, I'll act like I'm about to pay, but then it, they'll, they'll feel like they're being disrespected, and then they'll well, I pay. feel like that's how you keep your money. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder how much. Don't dinner. pay for dinners. <laughs> so is that yeah. normal procedure for y'all to take host out? Yeah, well, uh, before the pandemic, it was like a regular thing, mm -hmm. and as of I think that this week was like the first one we've had uh, all year. So it, it was cool to do again, mm -hmm. you know. Got you. I was going to ask, have you been in the comedy clubs really? Because I know in New York, a lot of it was shut down. So what have you been doing? Um, I haven't been there yet. Uh, my uh, All my friends are at the cellar again, and they're saying that it's great. And uh, I think it's awesome because, you know, it, Comedy clubs are so important, you know. That's the, the without, you know, going to live shows. I didn't realize how much fun it was. Not even to perform, just to like go. So, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, there's you know thousands of great stand ups that could you know tour and do stuff again. So it's just it feels it feels very positive. It feels like things are leaning toward a, a positive. I don't know if you guys feel that way. But Absolutely, yeah, 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 positive yeah. vibe, especially in New York. It feels feels really good. Do you think you think you was taking certain things for granted? Before the pandemic? Oh, for sure. I was like, not like that. I was like an asshole, but like definitely just like things I valued and like uh, the my outlook on certain things I think was askew for sure. And I think like where I'm at now, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, great, not 
glad it had happened, but grateful in a way for you know what it did to me personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you were living in in, in uh, your mom's basement. Yeah, yeah during yeah. the pandemic, right? Salute to, salute to Amy. Yeah, but, Amy. Why did you choose to stay there? Uh, well, I was about to move out. I li- I lived on my own from like seventeen to twenty four, twenty five, and mm-hmm. then shit got wild, so I moved home and stay with my mom and uh, I was getting ready to move out and then the pandemic happened and I was like, yeah, we should all just, you know, stay together. And then uh, my sister stayed and then we all just recently moved out. But it was really nice and we all got a bunch of dogs and it was really cool. See, that makes perfect sense Mm -hmm. though. We was having this conversation yesterday because our friend Ebony Williams (laughs) was saying how she was upset her fiance didn't want to stay with her. He wanted to stay with the kids and I'm like, well, that's his kids during right. a, a pandemic you want to be with your right. family your closest people right yeah absolutely yeah, yeah i don't want to be alone yeah you know and i don't know how to cook or anything like that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was really really nice did you feel better moving out yeah i feel good now it felt well at, you know like at, even though i had a cool setup down there at some at like on some at some point i was like i am living with my mom you know, like on some level, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on some level, like I am like, you know, it's it's a weird thing, you know, so uh, I had to get out of there. But it's got to be different for you, though, because I mean, you help with the, I'm sure you're helping with the bills, right? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, I bought it with her. Yeah, you uh, bought the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like, yeah, I'm not, but you know, it's still like, you know, you wake up and your mom's there and, you know, you're taking like a dump and she's like screaming and you, you can't hear her because you're in the bathroom. Yeah. It, it's just like. A situation I don't want to be in at like twenty seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Is it weird for you that every move you make and everything you do gets like documented and all press? Yeah, I don't understand it because like I really, I don't have social media at all. So like, and like, I've made it very clear that 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 type of lifestyle is really not what I'm about. Like, I'm not like online being like you know so i do, i really don't understand the appeal but uh i i really just feel bad for like people i'm close to and like you know my family cuz they got they got to read that stuff you know pe- i don't think that people realize that like uh it's like a chain reaction like it doesn't only affect the person like the everybody involved around them is kind of affected and it's not not really fair but I don't know. I hope it stop. It has to. It'll stop soon. So there'll be another. <laughs> you think? Yeah, no, there's got to be another. You should hope not. There's got to be another kid. Listen, there's a lot of people people don't care about, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. Right. I know. There's I know. people that's in movies, TV shows, everywhere, and nobody cares what right. they do. <laughs> so you should be grateful that they care. I am very grateful. I just, I, I definitely, I don't understand to the extent that they go. Like, if it was just about the work, that would yeah, be yeah. super cool. But it's like, it's about like weird stuff, you know? Yeah. Are you are you folks in Staten Island still? You have, you have a fascinating life, though. I have to say, like when we read certain things. One thing I was wondering, I'm like, how does what is your pickup lines like? How do you approach women? Because a lot of guys could use some advice, and I would love to know, like, what is your approach? How how when you're interested in somebody. How do you approach them? Um, I am just uh, very, very honest. I think like what a lot of people do is they try to put on uh, their, you know, not even their best self, but like almost a version of themselves that they would like to be. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, eventually that will unravel, uh, you know. So I just off the top, I'm like, hey, I'm nuts. Here's all my issues. Here's what I do, here's the therapist, this is what happens. And that could either be a lot for someone or it could be, you know, they they could, you know. Most of the time people going through the same thing. They could be, or they could be like, cool, that yeah. was really refreshingly honest. Uh, or sometimes it could be a little intense and weird and people can't handle that stuff. But I think always going into it honest and like, um, you know, just not playing any of the games uh, like any of the text games or the I won't hit you up for a certain amount of hours because I don't I want to mm-hmm. seem busy. 
<laughs> you know, like if I'm if I'm in if, <laughs> no, if I'm into you, like I'm really into Word you. Word up. And uh, yeah, so you don't I don't want to do the Steve Harvey. What is it? Don't what is it? Don't talk to him for thirty. There's days. no rules, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I because that it, it just creates this whole anxiety and a lot of stress, and there's mm-hmm. enough of that going on. So I think like that part of the relationship. It should be so easy. It should just be like, hey, is this something's wrong today. Hey, I'm really happy today. Like, it's just communication is really key. Yeah. You think you have to talk to somebody every day when you're dating them? Like, if you start dating somebody, you have to somehow stay in contact, even if you're super busy. No, I think, I don't think every single day. I think, like, you know, if you trust and love the person and, uh, you know, they're, they're doing their thing or whatever, I, and you, you know, I think as long as you guys keep in touch, like, or, uh, can understand each other. Uh, I think you'll be fine. Um, that would that would be my advice. Are the, are the folks in Staten Island still mad at you for what you said in a about the bar? Yeah, in December. <laughs> I mean, I I said that, and then like the next day, the guy like ran over a cop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which wasn't really a good response. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm not like I love Staten Island. Obviously, I live there still. Like I'm a comedian. I pick at stuff. Uh, you know, I don't, I make fun of myself and where I'm from. I don't think it's fair to pick at other stuff and not be able to pick at your own stuff. Right. Right. As, as a, you know, comic that that's your job. Uh, but you know, there's all, there's all, there's some, there's some people on Staten Island that are some interesting people and uh, you got, you got to deal with, you just got to deal with it. I don't, I don't really give a shit about those people people uh and i i just hope you know they stop doing stuff like that how do they treat you when you're moving around Staten island though it, honestly 90 yeah. percent of the time super positive yeah yeah, because yeah. Right. i i think like there's no hatred in my heart towards any of that i just want people to like when you hear staten island i want people to be like oh cool not like nah i'm not coming there i've always felt like that though because of wu-tang well it's just like i have a lot of cool friends and I want them to come <laughs> to Staten Island and like <laughs> they, you know 75% of the time they're like nah come 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 hit me in the city like, really even when they're in town and I'm like this is like my city like come come to my house like they're like nah man I don't want to go to Staten Island so like I would like that to change and you know when you people in Staten Island do stuff like that at the bar and you know it's just it doesn't help we had, I had a great time when I came out there. We thought it was only at your house, though. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's for, that's what it is. It's a <laughs> suburb. It's yeah, a house it's a suburb, type yeah. vibe. There's restaurants out there, and there's a few parks, and it's like a suburb. That's what I love about it. It's not the city. But, like, you know, there's that, uh, there's a little, there's just, like, that bad taste in your mouth. It there. might be jealousy, though, especially, you know, when you, the, the movie King of Staten Island. Yeah. Great film. You know what I mean? Salute to Judd Apatow. Thank but you. They, they might get mad at the fact you labeled yourself King. Yeah, you know I like I mean? how people thought that that was my idea for the title. <laughs> my idea for the title was the worst. The worst. And Judd was like, "No, that no, that is that is horrible." He was like, he was like, "This is a, a film, so we're gonna call it the King of Staten." I was like, "All right," uh, but yeah, I I I, uh, I think being shirtless on a poster that says the King of Staten Island and you're like this would, that would be aggravating. A bit arrogant. See. It could be a bit, I, I can see how somebody can say it's a bit arrogant. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, I yeah. can see that for sure. Now, now, now you had, you had King of Staten Island come out last year, also uh, Bad Adolescence. Were you, were you upset those movies didn't get the theater look? Um, here's the thing. If Here's how I feel about projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm into the person, I will find a way to go see it. Right. So, I think, you know, we had, it was two pandemic movies. Uh, I'm a lot of people were just sitting at home. I think it was cool that they had an option to maybe have another thing to watch that was new. Uh, but did I also miss out on like my first ever kind of premiere where I like had a lot to do with the projects? Yeah, mm-hmm. that that I kind of missed out on, and you know was doing a lot of Zoom press, which I'm sure you know is, sucks. Sucks. This is like crazy to me right Feels now. Feels so good. So, I'll never take it for granted ever again. Oh my god, it's so nice to be in here. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was. I was, I was happy that uh, people had something new to go watch because I was myself sitting at home like, oh man, I just finished like Ozark. Like I'm, well, 
<laughs> I'm like screwed until another reality show or something comes out. But luckily, I got into 90 Day Fiance. Do you watch that? Oh, my God. That's my show. Yeah. Are you watching The Single Life with Big Ed? I, Big Ed is amazing. He's... I just want to say. I'm torn. When he went to the Philippines, though, and he had to sleep on the floor. Remember that episode? Yeah, and yeah, the rat yeah. ran over him and he had to shower with her father. That was insane. Yeah, what? it was insane. But, <laughs> dude, there's this guy named Big Ed and he's like, like he has like some sort of a disorder where like his neck bone Basically, he has no neck, so he, he's like this, right? And he's like mid fifties, mm -hmm. and he like only go, he has like a daughter that's like thirty or whatever. But and he, his daughter's like, just please don't ever date anyone younger than me. And he only dates girls that are like right. younger than her. And, and he always, has high standards. Yeah, like, he has and very high standards. <laughs> and the dude's like, he's four <laughs> eleven. And like he's so. But he wasn't so bad looking when he was younger. Did you see his? He pictures? was kind of a hunk when he was young. Even with no. Yeah, he wasn't. That Even bad. when it, well, because he was like bulk. So okay. it, yeah, he kind of looked like. Yeah, he looked good. <laughs> um, but he's a riot, dude. He has. He's like. He's so fun to watch. I'm obsessed with that guy. That How the hell do you have time to write? Watch this kind of stuff when you're writing and everything else. <laughs> oh, I I don't sleep very much, and uh, you know I like. Uh, I just love. It's. It's very addicting to watch. Mm -hmm. It's like that show Pawn Stars and like uh, American Pickers. <laughs> it's like it's like you'll be like, I just watched four seasons of this. I'm yes, like, yeah. you just end up watching everything at home. And Ninety Day Fiance, they have this other couple. The woman is older, right? And she was dating this guy, and then she ended up sleeping with his cousin. You know that woman? Which one is that? I know I, my favorite couples are Michael and Angela. Yes. Yeah. The classic. Mm -hmm. she's just He's like, Nigerian. She's yeah. like an older white woman. She's just like mid fifties, like MAGA, like, you know, Chain has, smoker. has two packs of cigarettes in her titties. <laughs> and she, she just will be like, Michael. And like, and she's a riot. And my other favorite guy to follow <laughs> is because he's such a, jerk uh and i and i love it uh is cult have you been following cult? oh my gosh yes cult yeah, yeah, yeah and um and his mom right he lives yeah with his he mom. lives with his mom but it, like not how i live with my mom oh it's sorry like, pete i'm sorry that was no like like no 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 he no he lives with his mom the way i'm afraid people will look think i live like with explain, my mom. explain like he lives with his mom. Like he's a bum. Like he's like morning mommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> like he'll, he's like, what are we doing today? He don't pay the bills. Type no, stuff. no, no. It's I think they share it. No, he or, does. He, and his mom will be like, I don't like her, and they'll like beef with each other. And she's yeah. Very, like into his life aggressively. It's pretty wild. Wow. Yeah, I think you, I. You think, gotta get into it. I think you and the wife would love to to watch. It's like a fun show to like watch with with someone. Nice. You know, interestingly, when the pandemic started. I interviewed, um, you know, Soldier Boy from 90 Day Fiance, right? Oh, and, I'll be there yes. for you. Yes, baby Anything girl. You I that song's a bop. There's a Soldier Boy that does music on 90 Day Fiance that's not Soldier Boy? Yeah, but it's Soldier Boy. It's S O J A J A B O R. Yeah. And what is Soldier? What is our Soldier? Well, is it all soldier like S-O-L-J? L-J-A, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah. But what was exciting when the pandemic started and we started doing Zoom interviews, I just randomly DM'd him, like, I would love to, you know, get you on my podcast. And he actually did the interview. And I was like, because I never had thought about doing these interviews with people that are, like, in Nigeria or other countries. Right. And so it just made it so much easier and more accessible to do things that previously, if you're not in person or on the phone, I didn't think it would happen. Yeah, he's uh he that's a that was another great couple. Are they still together? Uh no. no? They, he said think... that he only was with her because he felt sorry for her. Oh, it's usually yeah, one out of every like ten couples makes it. But it's it's always fun to watch. I think you and you should do a ninety day fiance podcast. I would love like to like a recap. <laughs> I would love to do a recap. Uh, yeah, it's great. You're doing that. Oh with my God. We could probably interview some of them. I'm I'm obsessed with all of them. <laughs> I think they're they're like like I don't I wouldn't get like freaked out like if I saw like Leonardo DiCaprio, but if I saw Big Ed walking down Sixth <laughs> Ave, I would lose my fucking mind. I would go insane. He lives in New York? No, he lives in uh San Diego. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and his mom actually just <laughs> moved in with him as well. <laughs> And he has a little dog named Teddy. Why do I know all this? Yes. <laughs> all right, but good. We're fans. Yeah, yeah, we love it. I mean, that, that's what you're up here talking about today. You're doing the Audible original hit job. 
Right? Yes. An audio scripted mm-hmm. show. Uh, uh, audio, uh, Audible original with Kiki Palmer. It's a workplace comedy. It's about uh, two people that work at a uh, place that uh, hires people to kill the most dangerous people in the world. And uh, it's, uh, it's really funny and fun. And I had fun working with Kiki. It was kind of like this. It was the first thing I, I got to do during the pandemic. So we were both just so thrilled to like be around another person. And uh, it's really fun. And I, th- I think there's 12, 30 minute episodes. Now, what made you want to do that? Because you do TV, you do film. Why the yeah. Audible original? Well, first, I want to be like you and like Kevin Hart and just like. We're doing okay. You guys <laughs> just like, you guys just like, it, this is like a lot of, it's like a lot of bags, you know? <laughs> I would have loved to have that hit job show. My God. There's a lot of bags around <laughs> that you could. No, I think expanding the brand yeah. is wonderful. I, th- mm-hmm. I also love voiceover work because like, if it's great, it's great if it doesn't work out, your face isn't on it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, who gives a <laughs> shit? You know what I mean? Like it's like it's like nobody's ever been mad at someone for a cartoon or or anything like that. So it's it's kind of like a uh, it's just like a, a world where it's kind of free and you could be have fun and be weird. So I think anytime you can do voiceover work, it's a, it's a super big win. And this and the show could turn into a TV show or a movie in the future. Yeah, and yeah, and like right. Broadway video isn't messing around. They get they have like four or five of these, and you know they're getting they're getting some cool names and like like Kate McKinnon from mm-hmm. the show's doing doing one. So yeah. I think it's gonna be great. No, I love it. I love Audible yeah. Originals. I, I mean, I like I like creating audio scripted content because it's easier. You don't have to go through all the red tape of TV and film. Right. If you got a good idea, you could just go do it. Now you got a proof of concept. If it right. works, who knows where it can go in the future? Right. That happened with um Brons- with Bronzeville with Lorenz and yep. Lamar Tate, uh, Lorenz Tate and his brothers. They actually had a show Bronzeville that's an audio show, and now it's turned into a series. Oh, that's so. awesome. Yep. Oh, that's mm-hmm. sick. Now you you, you, got, think, you got, think that's the goal for you? Would you would you like that to happen? I would yeah, that would be awesome. I would I love working with Kiki, so that would be super fun. Um I'm I'm like open to I'm surprised anybody lets me work, so I'm just down. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Well, I'm still I'm still at that stage where I'm just like, oh sick, yeah that's, yeah, that's awesome. I'm not like jaded by anything yet. And you got you got rid of a bunch of your tattoos, right? Yeah, I've been removing them because uh, uh it's just like it takes like three hours to cover all of them. And, uh, oh. and and then when you're watching the movie, you could kind of tell a little bit. You like the skin just kind of looks weird. So I j- just figured I'd burn them off. But uh, you've been doing the laser surgery. Jimmy? Yeah, it sucks. And my doctor, it just it also sucks because you just you gotta hear like they put goggles on you, right? And uh, so you're just like in the dark. And then your doctor, my doctor, had like has to announce the tattoo before he lasers it because he wants to make sure I want to get rid of that one. So it's like kind of embarrassing because I'll just be in the dark and all of a sudden you'll hear uh, uh, Stewie Griffin smoking a blunt. <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah. And he'll be like, all right. And then just start lasering it. And it's just like really embarrassing. How many have you gotten removed so far? Uh, I mean, doing the hands now, it takes like, 12 sessions uh, a tat, so. And I heard it hurts worse than getting an actual tattoo. Yeah, it it hurts worse, and it's just like the, like, it's not instant. It's like a long game. Like, Mm -hmm. this is going to take a year and a half. So it's like, that kind of sucks as well. Mm -hmm. They're not like immediate results. It's like you get Mm -hmm. lasered, and then it's a six-week healing process, and then you're like, oh, I guess it's a little lighter. But as you keep going, it, it gets better. How old were you when you got your first tattoo? Yeah, I was 16 or 17, and it was uh, me and my buddy Ricky got... Uh, Ricky! You know, you know Ricky Velez. Yeah. Uh, he was in King of Staten Island as well. Uh, he, uh, we got Swerve Life tattooed on our, our knees uh, because uh, that Big Sean song where he said Swerve. At the, yeah. at the time, we it was, like, huge, and we were like, Swerve. We were like, that's that's forever. That's life. <laughs> So that's what y'all used to say, so like got, swerve. Yeah, it was swerve life. Yeah, so we got it on our knees. And I actually showed uh, Big Sean. He thought it was really funny. Why the uh, knees, though? <laughs> well, swerve life, we put it on our knees because uh, on the right leg, because that's the acceleration <laughs> leg on the gas pedal. <laughs> <laughs> And we were, that is very well thought out. And we were swerving. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. 
I was 16. I didn't know. I, I thought. What I was, did Big Sean say when you showed it to him? He was like, "You're a moron." No, he was like, "Oh wow," <laughs> <laughs> which is I think He's the like, ni- weird. I think that's the nicest thing he could have said yeah. was, "Oh wow." Where did you see him at? That you just pulled your leg out? That we just uh, we we tag a text exchanged. Yeah. Uh, He's a. We recently just texted. He's a. He's a good guy. How's Cuddy, man? I know you. You, you know you and Cuddy always been cool. What did you think all the backlash he got when he wore the dress on SNL? I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, I think you know when you get criticism like that, it's uh, like it's just like okay, cool. Those are people I don't really want to associate myself with anyway mm-hmm. people that are that close minded uh i thought it was really cool and like a cool tribute and uh you know i thought i mean virgil made it it's sick and they're gonna you know sell it as a unisex dress i thought he killed it i thought it was great it was also fun to hang with him and like you know me i've been a huge cutty guy forever so mm-hmm. getting to do uh a music video with him was like everything especially like i uh, this uh dan bulla and steve castillo wrote this this uh the sketch about you know like in the rap song there's just that that weird little flute you know like flute. like mask off has like a oh weird, yeah, yeah. Like, and big yeah, pimpin yeah, yeah. like has yeah. a, so it was just a rap song about like all the weird little flutes <laughs> and and, C- and cuddy did a great job and it was uh it was fun i i loved it yeah i don't understand why people cared so much I don't, there's like, we live in a world right now where everybody has an opinion um, and everybody like loves being cool on the internet and like just like piggybacking stuff or just like anything that they could be upset about or anything that they could get more followers or more people that they could talk to or like some of like the photos I see on like, like my boy shows me on Instagram, it makes me like sick. Like Mm -hmm. people are sick right now. Mm -hmm. And it and the I feel like the pandemic has really like exposed, you know, a lot of people. A lot of people really cracked, and uh, you know, that's why I don't have any of that stuff. It's just like I would because I'd be wiling out on the internet and stuff. So, um, yeah, you said you said in the beginning the beginning of the pandemic it was really rough for you. What what, what do you mean by that? It was just like I was working a lot. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, nothing. And then, like, I was in my mom's basement alone with my thoughts for, like, three to four months. And then was just doing press about, like, you know, for the movie. And it was just, like, dad stuff. It was like, your dad's dead. How does that feel? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just movie autobiographical about your dad. Your dad, dead, 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 dead. Yeah. And I was just like, ah. Uh, and I'm on Zoom, and I'm just fucking, and I hear my mom upstairs. And I'm just like, oh, this is a nightmare. And then, you know. It kept re-triggering you, basically. Yeah, it kept re-triggering me. And then, like, you know, I'm, like, super insecure about, like, people are like, you know, I... To make jokes about my dad being dead or tell stories about him to because one I want him to live on and two I uh, think making a joke about something like that and if he could get a laugh out of it it'd kind of it's a little healing you know mm-hmm. but I'm super insecure people are like oh you talk about your dad to be famous and I'm just like ah. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Talk about your dad because that's your dad. This is my dad. Part yeah. of your life. I, I, I believe it or not, I haven't lived very long, and I don't have very much <laughs> to talk about. So I take from what I know, criticizer. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I'm. I'm work. You know, I was super insecure, and um, still am a little bit. But like, got a lot. Got a lot better. Got a lot of help, and uh, luckily, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know. I don't know if you did this where you like tiered your friends. Yeah. Where during the pandemic, uh, Angela, I don't know if you did that where you were like, okay, mm-hmm. these are like fourth tier friends. These are like friends that you, <laughs> that like these oh, are friends yeah, that are yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, we're saying. all out. Like, okay, I'll have a drink with that person, and like we pretend like we're friends, but we're not. And then there's like third tier friends. Where it's just like you guys used to be really tight, but you're not anymore. But you still keep in touch because you feel guilty, yeah. right? And then there's second tier friends who think that they're first tier friends, but they're not. And then there's <laughs> then there's yeah. your real friends. 
I did that. Yeah. I teared my friends out. And then it made me like kind of just, I was like, my family's important. These four people are important. And, you know, now I'm going to try and work and have have some fun. Just stop yeah. being so hard on myself. Yeah, I don't know if I teared people. You know what I said? Like, it's certain people that you check on. You know what I'm saying? You check on often. Right. And I guess people you saw during the pandemic. Right. I mean, you couldn't see everybody, but if right. you were close enough to see a person, no, even right. if you saw them once, yeah. you're like, okay, that's my that's my, that's my, my folks. Oh, yeah. I actually got, got closer. I got closer with certain people. During the pandemic, I didn't see a I lot had of people. Now that I think about it, though, I, nah. I saw you once. I live by myself, so I think it's different, you know, for me. Like if people have families or they're married, obviously that's who you're with. Right. But when you live by yourself, you have to make sure that you interact with people, right? Because that can really just make you feel just so insane. Like you have to see people, and so there's people that I never really got a chance to spend time with like that. Like one of my friends came and stayed with me for months during oh, that's the pandemic. Nice. And yeah, so now we're really tight. And we were always cool, but we weren't as close as we are now thanks to the pandemic. Your pandemic buddies. Yeah, that's my pandemic bestie. Yeah. No, that's interesting because I'm thinking yeah. about it. I'm like, who did I... Saw? We saw each other like once. You came to the house we, once. We do a couple phone calls. We do phone calls. We do Texas, like a monthly checkup. FaceTime, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, um, But... I saw Angela Rye. Who did I see? It was pretty low key for me. <laughs> it was pretty low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides, if besides family and like you know seeing my grandparents from across Same. the street for the first six months, uh, yeah, it was pretty. I might have saw six people. Yeah, you, Angela, Dolly, Ashley. I did. I did move around a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't. I went to Mexico. I didn't at all. I went to go see Dave Chappelle in Yellow Springs. That's a cool. Of oh, times. I heard that was awesome. That, that's yeah, that's got to be amazing. cool when you could just take over a town. You could do that in Staten Island. Dave, mm -hmm. I, I, maybe. You could Dave, easily do Dave that in Staten Dave, like, Island. runs Ohio. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, Dave yeah. is, like, <laughs> like, he might as well be, He like owns a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 Now, Eminem hit you, too, after you played him on SNL. Yes, sir. What was that conversation like? Um, I, uh, he uh, said a bunch of really nice things uh, that he didn't have to say. So, uh, you know, just to... You know, teams reached out, and uh, I just said thanks. And uh, yeah, he he was really nice. He just was like, I I, I appreciate the raps. I thought they were cool, and uh, you know, I was like, I think you're really cool. This is really cool for me, and uh, thank you. And then it got off the phone as immediately. I don't know if <laughs> you guys like that, but when you talk to like someone that cool or like legendary, it's awkward. You, you're just like, uh, okay, you. I got what I needed, and I don't want you to hate me, and bye. Like, <laughs> I just like, yeah, I just am right. so afraid to, to yeah, the, fuck up. The, um, and the ending is always the worst, right? You just don't know how to end it. You're like, I, all right, thanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that's why I, <laughs> yeah, texting is sometimes better for stuff like that. But, it, it, yeah, he. I just, uh, we did a couple M&M sketches this year, and I just, you know, wanted to say thanks for it. Now, Pete, you know what I wanted to ask you about um, SNL and your past experience? Yeah. I know that there was some criticism you had of them, but obviously you're still on the show. So you guys have yeah, rectified yeah, yeah. whatever was wrong. So did that help when you publicly spoke about it? And then they were like, OK, how can we fix this? Like what happened? Well, so I did that with with you. Yep. So I was like, you know, I was like fresh out of rehab and like not really thinking clearly and, you know, kind of felt like i don't know i mean i was cert definitely feeling a certain type of way uh but i didn't really handle it in the best way and you know that like if i it was definitely a learning experience because like the you know the backlash or like the not not backlash or just like what i had to deal with following that kind of sucks so like the mature thing would have been to like internally deal with that and be like, hey, I feel this way. And then they would have been like, oh, hey, actually, it's all in your head or like uh, that we hear you uh, will make this work. I don't think um, you were being malicious in that conversation. I, I was No, I just definitely just I definitely expressing how you felt felt a certain type of way. You know, you didn't um, call nobody by name. Yeah. You just said you don't like, you know, the way yeah. things are sometimes. But, you know, I'm. Now I feel really happy and lucky to be there. I've, you know, I apologize to the cast, uh, you know, for, you know, letting it out in that way and not, you know, coming to them. And they were cool with it. And, 
yeah, I, I because of that, I think I'm I'm having my, the most fun I've had. Uh, you know, just I one because of ca- the ability. Can't believe I get to work, and then two is just like I feel really relaxed there now. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no like uh, tension. You know. So maybe it was good it happened. No matter how much gossip cop tries to bring me down. <laughs> <laughs> Things are all peachy at Dirty Rock, baby. Did, they, did that make the group chat go off? Like, so, Pete, who's the cast members that... Uh, you know, they started a side like, group chat. No, no. That's that when was... they started a side group chat without you in it, and they're like, yo, did you see what he was Stop doing? Stop yeah. yeah, you're going to give Pete anxiety. Stop. Oh, I have such... I'm going <laughs> to... No, Colin... I remember Colin came up to me the day after that came out. He was like... I don't feel that way about you, buddy. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> Is everybody think I'm a dick? Um, <laughs> that was good though. It was he- I think it was healthy. It was good in a lot of ways where I got to learn and you know how I could now I feel like I handle things better. You you know what would help that if like because you know mental health matters everywhere, right? If they had yeah. on these sets, if instead of like meetings where y'all go over writing, y'all just had meetings to see how everybody feels. Yeah. If they brought everybody together and just be like how does everybody feel? Yeah. Good, bad, happy, sad, whatever. And then people could express themselves in those moments. If more companies did that, more programs did that, I think it would help a lot. It would help a lot. It's le- like it, The problem with that is like uh, it just sounds lame. So like people yeah, on, people online will be like, oh, you need to have a meeting about your feelings? They don't it's have like, to know, though. It's like, yeah, dude. Yes. <laughs> yes. I do. <laughs> what do you think therapy is? I'm really sad. Yes. What therapy is meetings about our feelings. It would take five minutes. Hey, everybody everybody good? Anything, anybody mad or upset about anything? Anybody want to fix anything? <laughs> and then, you know, go on with your day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give everybody, maybe give everybody edibles and then, you know. It's yeah, like- microdose and mushrooms. Yeah, you, you did that recently. Yeah, I switched to to acid uh, instead of doing the mushrooms. I I, I I find that it's more fun. Really? Yeah. Like that's where you put the little paper under your tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. It hasn't changed since the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> doing that's the one thing that'll never change. The way you do drugs, whenever your people still blowing up blow, and it'll never change. <laughs> what do you? What did it do? What did it do for you? I mean, for me, it makes me more mellow and appreciative of things and kind of relax and uh, enjoy music more. But, uh, you know, some people, I don't know, I've never had this experience, but some people are like, oh, my God, I saw a dragon. I was like, I don't know what you're doing. But I've uh, I've never had those. (laughs) People that do psychedelics, I've never had those, like, experiences that, I have. You have? Where, like, they portray in cartoons where they're like, oh, the wall started talking to me. And I'm like, I wish. I saw saw Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. And um, (laughs) we were playing charades. And so my friend's boyfriend, like, was trying to act something out. And he turned into Eeyore. And then I all of a sudden was in Alice in Wonderland. And then the chair turned into, like, a nice, friendly, like, bear that wanted to give me a hug. It was it was interesting. That's see that sounds awesome. That's never happened to you even on shrooms. No, never. I don't know. I, maybe I just did them too much. Yeah. Right. I think but people what, also I think have bad first, experiences. The first time I ever did it, I remember being like, "Whoa, man!" But like ever since then, I never got like that. I'm jealous. <laughs> and then I can't stop laughing, and I laugh so hard I start crying. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's good though. It's a it's good experience. Good. But I always tell people if you're not in a good mood, you can't do it because you'll have bad hallucinations. And it could be a really bad experience. If you're like trying to forget something or you're going through something tragic, sometimes it makes it worse. Yeah, you got to be in a, a positive uh, mood and, and with like at least someone that's cool uh, and that's like down. Otherwise, you're going to have a really bad time. Now, uh, Suicide Squad? Suicide Squad. When's that coming up? August Woo! 7th, I think. Is that going to be in theaters or is it? I think theaters and HBO Max. Okay, okay, okay. At the same time, or HBO Max for a month and then only theaters. Now, but that's a big fucking movie, bro. That's sick. What's the character you playing? Yeah, uh, Blackguard. His name is Richard Hertz, which is uh, <laughs> Dick Hertz. Dick Hertz. <laughs> yeah. That's how it is in the, but that's how it is in the comic book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for real. Uh, um, Dick Hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I, you know... Of course, if I ever get to play a superhero, of course his name would be Dick Hurts. But, uh, <laughs> dude, it's one of those things that I still am just like, uh, 
it was, when I got to shoot it, it was the first time I was like, wow, this is some Hollywood shit. Like, That's got to be your biggest one, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. I've never seen some shit like this before. Like, they built a beach. I was like, that's like nicer than most resorts I've stayed at. Wow. I was like, holy shit. I was like, can I stay here when you guys wrap the yeah. set? Um, and like, it was just like the first like, what welcome to the biz kid kind of moment for me. Uh, I can't believe it. I get to see like a poster. I mean, I'm very small on the poster, but I'm on, I'm on it. Yeah, yeah. You know absolutely. what I mean? It's it's it's, mm-hmm. it's a it's a cool feeling, and uh, it's it's like. My, first time my uncles are like uh or like and my little cousins are excited about something I, i've done which is fun what else what else you got coming suicide squad got the suicide squad coming uh what else we got we're, we're just you know working on the ramones uh movie oh uh, the ramones with, with movie, jason yeah. orley uh so we're just working on that hopefully gonna shoot that in december or january so y'all in pre-production for that yeah okay what and character are you playing in there i'm uh, i'm playing joey ramone wow got very lucky wow that's huge very very mm-hmm. lucky yeah my uh, mom's got to be excited about that one my mom's stoked all the uncles are stoked uh and <laughs> yeah it, uh so i'm i'm really excited and uh met with mickey lee his brother who wrote the book uh, i slept with joey ramone and it's uh it's with netflix and it's it's exciting. It's a shot. I'm getting mm-hmm. a shot, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Absolutely. All. What do you well. What do you do to ce- What do you do to celebrate? Like when all these great things are happening, how do you celebrate? Acid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I uh, honestly like whenever I get a day off. Like my favorite thing to do. Like like I said before, is just maybe watch South Park or Family Eye all day or 90 Day Fiance, and I just like smoke <laughs> weed and watch it, and that's that's my celebration. Uh, nice. But yeah. I'm uh, I'm excited. It's PDD, man. I'm I'm happy to see you. You look good. Thank you, man. You sound good. good. To see you, man. All's all's well in the world of Pete Davidson. You as well, Angela. Good to see you. And we have history too. We actually started a music video together. Yeah. Oh, fab, fab <laughs> that? music video, right? Fab I remember music that's video. so funny. Yeah. I gotta look back at that. I think you were you there too? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the host. It was no. a game show. <laughs> yeah, it was me yeah. and Charlamagne. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is I that, that video yeah, online yeah. somewhere? I don't yes. know. It was weird. I remember. It is, it is. Oh, well, I remember what I was know. the joke. It was like, oh, he takes me to Chipotle or so, something. I don't remember. I don't remember what the song was, but every time I've seen Fab a couple times in uh-huh. passing, and he's been like, yeah. Yeah, uh, all that shit is going to be super funny in five years. Yeah, we, we knew what I was looking at. Guy code for a while. Guy code. I was looking at that ball. Remember that balls video? Oh, the balls, yeah. Remember to say it was shake your balls? What was that shit called? I don't know. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> we did some weird shit. Some weird shit. That sounds yeah. weird. Shit. Yeah. I was going, you know what? I'm going to post that tomorrow. I was going to post the video of uh, when you was on my old talk show. Oh, oh, with Juicy J? Yeah. 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 And it had your mom talking to you all sexy. Oh, that, yeah, that was, oh, what a nightmare that was. That was awful. That was all set up. Yeah, I was just like. Oh, I like this one. And it was my mom. <laughs> <laughs> listen, life is good, man. I mean, listen, I, the, the big, the biggest thing is I'm happy that we're in studio having a conversation. You know yeah. what I mean? I feel that feels good. Yeah, it feels positive. It feels really. We good. Ma- we made it through 2020. Absolutely. So y'all make sure y'all check out Pete Davidson. Uh, Hit job. When does Hit job come out? Is it out? I think it's out. Or it's uh, it, it, if it's, it's not out, it will be yeah. out within a week from whenever this is out. Yeah. So it's an yeah. Audible original. I'm sure it's free with your Audible membership. PDD, love you, brother. Thank you for coming, man. Love you, man. Thanks for having me. It's Thank the, you, Angela. Thank you. It's the Breakfast Club.